What's going on, everybody? It is Matty here from Chill TCG. We are back, and we're going to be taking a look at the top 32 decks from our Chill Series number 22 tournament, which wrapped up yesterday. It was a big two-day event. Um, of course, the Tropical Beach was on the line. Big shout-out to the Filthy Goat for not only donating in Tropical Beach, but a bunch of awesome prizes, um, which we gave away to our viewers for the live stream. Thanks, everybody, who tuned into the, the, the top 32 live stream last night, by the way. Um, our, at one point, we had, uh, like, 125 people at, uh, watching uh, at one time. It was absolutely phenomenal. It was a great live stream. Uh, just a great two days overall. Um, I want to thank everybody who played. We had 320 players in this massive, massive tournament. Um, and uh, it was honestly just a, an absolute blessing to be able to put this on for you guys. Um, I'm recording this on Friday, uh, which the, all the prizing for the uh, the people who made Top 32 as well as the people who won the giveaways will be going out later tonight. So if you're watching this, uh, my hair, I'm just fixing my hair because I like to do that, <laughs> is uh, is going to be out uh, later tonight. So so don't mind. I uh, don't mind... Uh, you know, waiting a little bit. Hopefully, it's going to be okay with you guys, but uh, it will be out eventually. Um, and today, we're going to be taking a look at the top 32 deck list because we did cut to top 32 um, instead of top 16. So this time, uh, so let's take a look. We're going to start all the way down here, and we're going to be going a little bit quicker because we are covering 32 decks instead of, um, you know, the. Uh, and this was the bracket, by the way. We're going to be covering uh, top 32 because we cut to top 32 instead of 16 now. So we're going to go through them a little bit quicker. Um, and uh, at the 32 spot, at the number 32 spot, we have Brandon Mac Macleod. Macleod. Um, he was playing Peak. Let's take a look. Oops. Let's take a look at his at his deck. Um, okay, cool. So this is uh, pretty cool. I mean, this is just sort of Peak Ron these days. This is what it looks like. Uh, we do see the two big charms in Peak, which is a bit more common now with uh, Rusted Sword coming out in ADP. So I can understand that completely. Four hammers, one yell grunt. Three boss. Uh, this is a good list. Um, Pigram, you know, it didn't perform as well in the long run as I thought it might have, but uh, you know, Pigram was our number one seed getting out of phase one. So, you know, definitely, uh, definitely pretty impressive. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete some tabs here so I know where we're at. Okay. So that was a uh, number 32 seed. So shout out to Brandon. Congrats, my guy. Um, Tilly here. We have Tilly KSG here at the uh, the number 31 seed playing ADP. This is single Mawile ADP with the two Rusted Sword, one Air Balloon as well, one Great Catcher, four Boss. Everything in here pretty cool. We do see the Orange Guru on top of the Eldegoss, um, but uh, yeah, everything else in here is pretty standard. No Hammers, but we do see the two Energy Spinners, uh, four E-Switch, so plenty of different ways to get that GX attack off consistently, which I think is probably the most important thing right now uh, for ADP. So, you know, big shout out to Tilly. I like this list. I like ADP. We did have some pretty successful ADP players, so uh, nice to see uh, Tilly there at the number 31 spot. Shout out to you. Next up, we have Gamer Allo, the man who won the last GG Tour Regional, our guy here. He's playing Rillaboom tonight at the 30 seed. Uh, let's take a look at his Rillaboom Raweg list. Uh, this is a pretty cool list. Uh, I like Raweg. Of course, we have the Rillaboom in here. He's got a 1-1 one -one lineup between the, the old Thwacky and the new Thwacky. Um, you know, he does have the one Mewtwo in here, but he's got the two doubles, a great single prize attacker, two Raweg's. He's got the Shaman in there as well. Um, looking at this, we have one Big Charm, one Toughness Keep, one Air Balloon, um, and he's running the one Power Plant as well. Uh, so this is definitely a pretty cool deck list. He's got the Tag Call Engine, Malawanas, all that good stuff. Uh, we don't see Hammers in the list, which is something to note, but for the most part, two Stamps, yeah, two Ordinary Rods. It's a very cool list. Um, you know, a lot going on here, but honestly, this it's it synergizes very well. Um, and I think Rilla Morawick is one of the top 10 decks in the format right now. If you checked out my top 10 uh, decks video, you would uh, definitely, definitely see that you would know it's uh, been pretty impressive so shout out to gamer allo man uh having a really good uh last couple weeks with uh over here at the chill tcg series okay next up we have the zero fen zero the the feno i don't know he was playing senta scorch here at the number 29 seed what's going on my dude um congrats on getting top 32 um I, this is okay this kind of glitched out uh, there he goes there okay so this is a uh, Senti, except we have a Nine Tails in his list, which is cool to see. We don't have Reshi, but we do have Heatran GX. So this is kind of like a different version of Senti. One thing to note is that we do not see Giratina here. I wonder if that uh, hurt him at all. But we got uh, other than that, you know, it's pretty standard. Thirteen energies in this list, which I think is a little bit more than usual. Uh, three Hearth, two Crystals. Uh, the Nine Tails is pretty cool. I do like to see that as well. And he's got two Eldegoss in his deck instead of just one. Uh, consistently pulling those welders out of the discard pile. I kind of like double Eldegoss, I'm not going to lie. And um, we have a big charm in here as well. That's probably to be put on the Senti. Um, uh, keep it out of range of those E-turn, maybe Poison E-turn, things like that. I guess you can also attach big charm to Crobat um, and things like, uh, you know, Crobat to Dene get you out of that ADP attack range. So, you know, that might be, uh, you know, ultimate rate range. That might be pretty smart. Two reset snaps here. 
I like to see it. It's a pretty cool senti list. I like when people change things up a little bit. I think that Ninetales was super spicy. Uh, next up, we have Richard Ruiz, who is playing Excadrill. This is attacking Excadrill. We had one of these guys in top 32. It was Richard. What's going on, Richard? Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, attacking Excadrill is pretty cool. I think it's a very good single prize attacker right now. It's got a great typing. Um, he's got, you know, the, the Chinchino draw engine here. We got the 2-2 lineup of Altaria Swablu as well to get those, uh, you know, those, those nice easy wins in some matchups for sure. And he's got one to Dene, the Mew, uh, or Corey as well on top of the Fion. So I like it. He's running three Hapu, which is really good to thin through your deck uh, to get that 11th hour tackle out late in the game. I like Hapu there. Um, got the Marnies, two boss, yep. Four Ordinary Rod, I think, is very important in this list for sure. Uh, primarily only using single prize attackers and only seven energy in the deck, so I can understand that 100%. Um, and then we have the two Dojo, two Palpad on top of only only seven fighting energy in the deck. Most of our attackers are either one or two energy, so it kind of makes sense here. Um, but uh, yeah, it's super cool. I like this list a lot. I think it was really cool. I think Excadrill was a really good call for the tournament. You know, so huge shout out to you, Richard. Uh, thanks so much for playing. Um, and congrats on making top 32. And right after Richard, we have Gaia Storm, TCGs, uh, from Spain here. He was playing Mad Party. This was actually our only Mad Party in top 32 as well. These two players ended up fighting each other, actually, going against each other in top 32 in the first spot. We're in that first round of top cut yesterday. We didn't get to watch the game on stream, but this is a cool Mad Party list. It's a little bit different than the typical one that we see. We have two Roxy in the deck is one important thing to note. And we do have Oricorio GX in the deck, uh, which is just something that you don't typically see, so... Definitely pretty, pretty cool. I, I actually enjoy this list a lot. Um, he's got the two Roxy, four Research, two Boss, one Giovanni's. Um, and we actually see a U-turn board on top of the two Air Balloons. Um, and no switches, so those are your going to be ways to switch out. Those are going to be your pivots. Almost of all your Pokemon have a tree cost of one. Um, so I kind of like the uh, the U-turn board for sure. Um, and he's got seven energies in here. Everything else is pretty cool. Um, I guess, you know, a lot of people are playing have been playing like the same Mad Party list for a while. So it's kind of see it. It's nice to see it a little bit different, right? Um, and, and a successful Mad Party list be a little bit different. So maybe if you're looking to play Mad Party, maybe you change it up a little bit. Maybe this is the Mad Party list that you run, right? Maybe this is maybe this is what you uh, you go for. So huge shout out to Gaia Storm, man. Thank you so much for playing. Congrats on getting 27th in our 320 player tournament. Next up, we have Zekro from what is this? Uh, Italy. Um, he was playing Luke Metal. Let's take a look at his Luke Metal list. See if there's anything here that jumps out at us. Um, okay. So this is just a normal kind of tag call engine Luke Metal. Um, we got four, four, three in terms of the big three supporters there. Um, uh, the Pokemon, everything's pretty standard. No Aegis Slash in here. He's got two Malolanas, Cynthia, Caitlyn, Guzma, Hala. I like it. Yeah, everything here is pretty normal. He is playing Power Plants, so Power Plants is a very common supporter right now. It stops a lot of really, um, you know, great cards in the matchup. Things like Mawile, uh, things like Dedenne, things like Oracorio, right? A lot of GX of Pokemon with great abilities get stopped by Power Plant. And then overall, I think right now it's a better call than, um, you know, than Chaotic Swell, personally. Personally. Um, so yeah, nothing too, too crazy here, though. We do not see any capes, so the ADP matchup might be a little bit difficult. Uh, turbosation, things like that. But we do see four Metal Goggles, so, you know, again, kind of a, a, an older version, but a, a bit of a standard version. So shout out to you, Stekro. Uh, I like your Luke Metal list. Next up, we have Candice McCallister. I like that name. Playing Scorch. Um, and uh, Candice was... What was it? Sorry. Uh, 25th seed in the tournament. Now, this is more of a standard Reshi list here. We have the, the Reshi Ram instead of the Heatran. Um, we do not see Ninetales in this list. Only one Eldegoss. We do not see Giratina either. So this is one thing to note. A lot of people weren't playing Giratina in their Scorch lists, which is honestly a bit interesting because Luke Metal has been on the rise. But other than that, pretty standard uh, Senti list. I'm trying to find out. Uh, he's got the Bird Keeper in there, four nets, um, two switch. I think maybe Reset Stamp. Maybe people are teching in Reset Stamp instead of Giratina. Um, he's got four Jirachis in here instead of three, so maybe that was where that extra card came from, uh, from the Giratina. So I kind of like it. I kind of like it. I do suggest running Giratina in Senti Scorch, but maybe it wasn't that big of a deal, to be honest with you, Candice. If you're watching this, comment below. Was Senti Scorch that big of a deal? Or sorry, was uh, Luke Metal that big of a deal for you? Do you think you should have ran Giratina? I don't know. It's always good to get sort of that feedback from the players, right? Uh, for sure. Uh, we got Diplox215. He is from Peru, I think this is. Yeah, he's from Peru there. I know my flags now. Uh, he was playing Eternatus, and it uh, looks like just sort of a straight uh, disruption Etern build, and yes, indeed it is. Um, these Etern lists are probably the most common Etern lists that we have right now in the format, uh, personally, and I kind of agree um, with, with people playing it, right? I mean, we have the four crushing hammers and the two power plants. So we're, our whole goal here is to really disrupt a lot of these Pokemon that do rely on, you know, playing to Dene and playing, you know, or Corio like in Blounds or, or, uh, Mawile, like in ADP and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely a really good list. I think that, uh, if I was going to play E-Turn right now in the, in the format, this is probably the list that I would be playing. 
Uh, personally, I feel like you're at a disadvantage if you're not running Crushing Hammers in your E-Turn list. So, you know, overall, I, I would say that this is this is probably a really good baseline for an E-Turn list that you should be playing. So shout out to you, Diplox215. I uh, really appreciate you playing. Congrats on getting 24th in the tournament. Next up, we have Jake Gearhart, our man Jake Gearhart. I got 23rd in the tournament here, playing Luke Metal as he normally does. And he's probably playing Gears. Uh, he is, of course, uh, awesome, awesome. So this is, uh, again, Jake Gearhart swears by Poke Gears and Luke Metal instead of the Tag Call engine. Um, of course, we do have uh, four Quick Balls and three Poke Gears to find these nice supporters. We do not have Goose Mahala. We do not have Cynthia Caitlin. But we have an extra Malolana in here, which I think an extra Malolana is definitely fantastic. Uh, no tough, or no um, cape, uh, tough, cape of Toughness in here uh, to attach to Zamazenta. Uh, we just have the Metal Goggles or the Zamazenta, um, which I think, again, you know, we haven't actually seen that too, too much. A lot of people were, were kind of talking about that. <clears throat> but uh, maybe it isn't too, too necessary. We only have three Coding Energies as well, and we do have one Tool Scrapper, which is definitely interesting to note. So uh, Jake Gearhart, he knows what he's doing. He's got that nice two-line deck here. Um, always good to see that, and uh, great to see Jake Gearhart having a great outing at this massive Chill Series tournament. So congrats to you, Jake, for getting 23rd in the tournament. Next up, we have Skylon Bellows, my man Skylon here. 22nd in the tournament playing Rowag. This was our second Rowag. Both of our Rowags actually played each other in top cut, which is hilarious. Um, and this is extremely similar to the last list that we saw, except now we are running a Wonder Lab in here um, on top of just one Power Plant and one Swell. So he's got a lot of things in here to, to, to use, right? Uh, that's just something to sort of keep in mind. Uh, he's running two doubles. I like it. He's got the 3-2-2 two, two lineup. All good stuff. He's got two Rowags, one Eldegoss, one Mewtwo. I love it. Everything is all good here. Two Malolana, two Guzma Hela. I kind of forget exactly what, what the last Rowag was like when we looked at it like five minutes ago, uh, unfortunately. But this was our highest placing Rowag in the tournament. Skylon definitely did very, very well. Um, was 76ers in top cut? I actually don't remember. Actually, maybe he was. Maybe he was. Um, but we'll take a look. We'll take a look later. So, yeah, I mean, this was uh, this was Skylon's uh, Rowag list. It's, it's a really good one, man. I think the two big charms... Two air balloons with one cape is definitely really good because we're not seeing switch. And a lot of decks, you don't really need switch. You just need to run a couple air balloons, right? And and, and you can get those pivots and and uh, draw into them at some point, right? They usually tip, typically stick around for a few turns, so definitely not bad at all. Um, yeah, I mean, I like it. I like Rowig a lot. I think it's a very viable list. Um, and probably the best grass deck that we have in the format right now. Shout out to Skyline Bellows for getting 20 second in the tournament, dude. I mean, that's a very good placement. Uh, next up, we've got Robert Hines at number 21. He was actually our one seed after phase one, went 8-0 and with his Picarom list. Uh, dropped down to 21, uh, but did end up making it into our top 32 seed. So shout out to him. This is, was his list, which I think is almost exactly like that last list that we saw. Um, I don't know if there's actually any difference here now that I'm looking at it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a really good list. We've got the Hammers, got the one Yelgrunt, Big Charms again, because those rusted, uh, rusted swords are very scary. Um, they can now one-shot our peak roms and our choo-choos and stuff like that. Mewtwo's and all that good stuff. So big charm, very important. Um, two reset stamps, tag switch, all the good stuff, man. Uh, peak rom is slowly evolving over time, and I don't know. It might change a little bit after Battle Styles comes out, like once the format shifts a little bit. Uh, but you know what? For the most part, I think that peak rom is going to be on the down, <laughs> on the on the decline uh, once those Urshifu cards come out. But we'll see. Big shout out to Robert Hines. Uh, very cool deck. Uh, very good placement, man. Congrats on being the one seed after phase one as well um, and, and getting 21st in this tournament. Next up, we got a couple E-turns. We have Boo69X, got 20th in the tournament. Uh, let's take a look at his E-turn list and see if it's anything uh, we haven't seen. Oh, yes. Very good. That's very cool. So this is the, the Weavile GX E-turn list. This is very good because Weavile lets you move your your dark energies around, um, kind of conserve those energies a little bit better, um, especially it gives you the capability to kind of retreat to the bench to like one of these single prize attackers um, or another E-turn VMAX without really having to uh, sacrifice, I guess, you know, not being able to utilize those energies further, right? So uh, we got the two Hoopas. That I think that's standard. The two Weaviles, I'd like that a lot. Two, two of these Hoopas. Um, for the, uh, you know, the evil admonition attack. It's a very good attack. Personally, my favorite Hoopa. Uh, the other one is also very good too. Um, but now we also have a Guzzlord, which actually is very playable. Now the fact that we do have Weavile GX, cause it's easier to get these energies on this guy right here. And this attack can be extremely, extremely clutch. Um, so it, this E-turn list, it's a little bit less consistent overall. We have le we have a little bit more stage two Pokemon in here, but the thing is, uh, with Guzma and the ability to move energies around your matchup is actually a bit better. Um, against certain things that you might struggle with before, right? Things maybe like Decidueye or, or uh, you know, things in general that this Guzzlord might be uh, might be good against, right? And these Evil Admonition Hoop is also really good against Decidueye and stuff like that. So very cool. Definitely very cool. We have a Tool Scrapper in this list as well and three Hammers. Um, and he does have that one hiding. So it's a cool E-turn list. Like very, very cool. It's different. 
I, I definitely like seeing it. So shout out to you, Boo. Uh, very cool list, man, my man. And then we also have Justin Stites above that playing E-Turn 19th in the tournament. Let's take a look at his E-Turn list and see if uh, it's anything we haven't seen before. Okay, so this is actually interesting. So he's running two dangerous drills. He's not running any hammers. We do have this Sable Lion here with four goons. So that's important to note for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, it's cool. We got three boss, no hammers, two dangerous drills. We have two Pokemon catchers in here. So gusting, uh, definitely a very important facet of this deck. Um, and uh, we definitely uh, want to get, uh, I feel like we definitely want that consistently in the deck, which is why we have three boss as well as two Pokemon catchers, two comms, four quake balls, four quick balls. Only nine energies, a lot of great stuff here. Yveltal. Uh, Yveltal is not seeing as much play as it as it did about a week or two ago. I still think Yveltal is very, very good. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, huge shout out to uh, Justin Stitespear, and I, I like that list a lot. I think that uh, Sableye is super, super cool. Uh, Mitch was on the live stream for Top 32, and he was pretty high on Sableye as well. He was saying some cool stuff about it. Um, and I think that Sableye is kind of cool. It's a little bit of a two prize. Uh, like, it, it's a little bit dangerous to try to set up two energies on a on a frail stage two like that i'm um, gonna keep that on your bench for a couple turns but you know for the most part um i think that it, it can be extremely useful in a lot of matchups so next up we have zach lesage at number 18 in the tournament uh from canada of course playing adp this was our uh, highest placing adp in the tournament let's take a look at his list um now i believe he did uh post a video of his updated list i think that he says uh, he would have um uh, he said he would have run i think what is it um, he said he would change something about the list. I don't know. Something about adding Chaotic Swell, um, and then maybe something else on the list. I honestly kind of forget. Uh, but definitely go check out his tweet and his video to get more of an idea. But Zach, obviously a fantastic player, chose to play ADP for this event, because I don't think he had yet to really play it in a competitive environment yet, um, since rotation, or sorry, since the new, uh, the new format has evolved here with Shining Fate. So he tried it out. Obviously he's a really great player, so it's kind of hard to gauge the, the, how good the deck is, uh, because Zach was playing it, you know, maybe... Uh, maybe he kind of carried the deck, so, uh, you know, you never know, um, but, uh, you know, definitely shout out to Zach for getting 18th in the tournament and uh, being our best placing ADP right now out of 320 people at number 18 in the tournament, so shout out to you, my guy. Next up, we have Joshua um, Obladi, 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 I don't know, man, a 17th in the tournament, just outside top 16 from Italy, playing Luke Metal. Uh, let's take a look at his Luke Metal list um, and see what we're rocking with. Uh, Tag Hall Engine, Luke Metal, uh, everything's pretty standard here. We do see two Stealthy Hoods now, um, even though we haven't seen that many people playing Giratina. Uh, stealthy Hood, I guess, you know, it's it's kind of like a throwback for when people were playing that for a few weeks, um, but definitely can be very viable. Shout out to Joshua Sutherland. But yeah, I mean, uh, other than that, pretty standard Luke Metal. Uh, high energy counts, you got the stamp in there, got a scrapper in there, two dolls. Everything else is, is pretty cool, pretty good. Uh, no Aegis Slash or anything like that. People didn't really tech Aegis Slash for this tournament too, too much. Uh, but yeah. Super cool. Stealthy Hoods, man. That's kind of a throwback. We do not see Stealthy Hood too much anymore. Uh, shout out to you, Josh. Um, uh, Geosh, I don't know. Uh, for, for getting 17th in the tournament with Luke Metal. All right. Now let's get into our uh, our top 16 of the tournament. We have The Lantern 2002. Uh, this is my guy here from Britain. I uh, got 16th in the tournament playing his Santa Scorch list. We were fortunate to watch some of his games here on stream. He is playing the Giratina, and he has a Wonder Lab in his Senti list. Other than that, you know, everything is super, super standard. It looks like a, a typical ability Santa Scorch, uh, the T-Brophy special, um, but we do see a Wonder Lab in here, which is honestly pretty interesting. I'm wondering what he cut um, from the deck. Probably Fion. He probably cut a Fion and, and put a Wonder Lab in here, uh, which is kind of cool. I think Wonder Lab came in clutch a lot of times. It was a very cool tech, a very good, um, I you know, play for this tournament. I'm um, in, in this standard format and this, this this meta right now overall, I think that Wonder Lab is actually super, super clutch. Um, so I like Wonder Lab a lot. Um, a lot of stadiums in play being seen, so a lot of times, like, when you put down Wonder Lab, it probably won't stick for very consistently, but when it does, it can be extremely, extremely important. Um, so, shout out to you, The Lantern. Uh, again, top 16 in, in this absolutely massive tournament. Um, 15th in the tournament, we have 76ers, so this was our highest placing Raweg of the event. You knew 76ers would make it. He's the Raweg god himself from the U.S., 10, 4, and 1. Let's take a look at his Raweg list. He's always... Always getting super high placements with Rowag. Look at this guy. Look at this absolute baller in his list here. Everything else, yeah, I mean, this is actually kind of standard. He's running a ton of tag team supporters here. Uh, three tag team Pokemon, four tag calls. The tag call engine is huge in this deck. Like, very, very important. Um, you know, we do have the two charms, Toughness Cape, Air Balloon. We got one Swell, one Power Plant. Um, we don't see Wonder Lab in this deck, but we do see Stamps, all the other good stuff in here. I like it a lot. 
Uh, I like this list a whole lot. It's it's very competitively viable, very playable. Might be a little bit hard to build this deck these days. A lot of these cards are a little bit, you know, they're not super easy to obtain. Um, but, uh, you know, other than that, yeah, I think it's a very cool list to play. A pretty high skill gap, I would say, to play this Rowag list competitively, at least at the level that 76ers does. But he knows exactly how to play this list. He knows his matchups. He's a great player. So shout out to him. Uh, shout out to him. He made his 15th in the tournament with Rowag. I love to see that. Love to see that. Next up, we have Koichi Kimura from Japan, 10 and 4, playing Senti. Let's take a look at his Senti list and see if the Japanese guys have the spice here. Um, okay, so it's it's just it's just typical. It's just a normal Senti Nets list, except we see only three Nets and three reset stamps. So really hammering home how important reset stamp can be a lot of times in the matchups, especially in the long run. So I like it. And again, it's just a typical Senti list, Senti Nets, except he cut a net. For a reset stamp, and that's actually pretty cool to see. So big shout out to you, uh, Koichi. Um, you know, congrats, my man, on getting 14th in the tournament. I think you were. Yeah, so super cool to see. Uh, we had uh, a few centis above him. Technically, we actually had four, but uh, top 16 with Santa Scorch. You know, you love to see it, my man. Next up, we have uh, Stevivi TCG here. He is from China, um, or at least that's what he says he's from. Let's take a look at his Santa Scorch list. Um, so it's a it's a little bit different. We have a Cram in here, uh, only one Volcanion, uh, no Giratina, but we do see like the Fion still. Uh, Cram is pretty cool in the list, I think, for sure. Um, two Crobats, two Dedenes. Uh, we have only one Reset Stamp, but we have the four Scoop Up Nets. Uh, so it's a little bit different, but uh, you can kind of see how the difference between these two decks can really highly affect uh, the matchups in certain ways, right? The difference between having three Scoop Up Nets or, and four, the difference between having three Reset Stamps and only one. Uh, having cram in your list, it really just sort of changes like your your outs and, and your overall ability uh, to uh, to deal with some matchups, in my opinion. So definitely super cool. I like it. I you know I like it. I think all these lists are very cool. Um, I just think it's super interesting to see how like people play very similar lists, but they change it, you know, like just a little bit. Uh, Mal um, Malefic Maleficious? Mal Mal Maleficious Malefic Ad. I do. I don't know. I'm so bad at pronouncing stuff like this. My bad, my man. From the U.S., though, 12th in the tournament with E-Turn. I think it was our third highest placing E-Turn in the entire tournament. E-Turn was the most played deck, by the way. We had 61 people playing E-Turn in this tournament. Um, and this is very similar to what we saw before. This is a Disruption E-Turn, except he's not running Stadiums. He's actually just running some extra Pokemon. Um, he's running E-Spinner as well. Uh, he's got the 4-4-4 lineup for supporters. Uh, he's got three Veltals in his list, one Spear Tomb, one Hoopa, and four Crushing Hammers. Uh, so again, very similar to the last U-turn list that we saw, but overall, definitely pretty cool, um, and uh, definitely a very uh, impressive placement for this guy here. I like it. I think the Aveltal is extremely good in in E-turn. The fact that you can consistently have that free retreat pivot, uh, very important, very very important. I think that hammers is in, is just needed in E-turn overall. Um, I think that the spinners is also a good idea, just because it's like a searchable energy. Um, but it's the fact that if you're going second and you have a spinner in hand. That makes it much easier for you to get that extra energy on board by power accelerating on the second turn. So overall, energy spinner is more worth running, in my opinion, than an extra energy. It just makes more sense because you do have that extra factor um, on your first turn going second, right? So, you know, definitely important to keep that in mind. I think that it was definitely smart to play spinners, and I think that uh, this man here, I'm going to call him Mail. I think Mail was a very, uh, very good play for the tournament. 12th in the tournament as well, very impressive. Next up, we have Red Dragus from uh, Italy. He was playing this absolutely insane decidui list i've been looking forward to talking about this list maybe i'll even make a video on it at some point in the future but look at this guys it's just like so confusing when you first look at it i completely um misunderstood the meaning uh, and the purpose of basculin when i first looked at it um and uh, somebody in the comments was very nice to let me know um basculin is very good because of course you know it takes uh, a single energy to uh, to use the attack there and it does uh damage does 20 damage for each basculin that you have um, and, uh, you can hit the bench, you can hit any of your opponent's Pokemon on the board. Uh, we have the fighting energies in here, because if you attach fighting energy to Basculin and you have Dojo in play, you're doing enough, uh, hitting the bench to KO, uh, things like Volcanion or, or Blacephalon. Um, and I don't know if it actually, if weakness or resistance matters on the bench. I don't know if it keeps that into account, but even without it, it might even just be enough to, uh, to KO that, those things, uh, either in the active spot or on the bench, but either way, it's a very cool tech for those specific matchups. We have Hoopa as well, maybe for the, the mirror matchup, who knows? Um, I don't. Again, I don't really understand <laughs> this, this deck list too, too much. I just think that it's super, super cool. Uh, super cool. We have three Rosa, one boss, 
Uh, plenty of plenty of different types of energies here. Finding energy isn't that big of a deal because, I mean, realistically, we're not running Decidueye Goon, so you don't need the dark. And uh, a lot of our Pokemon have colorless energy in their attack cost anyway. So um, almost uh, pretty much all of them do. So you might as well just be running uh, some fighting energies because, again, this tech is very interesting. And it's uh, it's down here as just Decidueye, but maybe Decidueye Basculin is, is its own archetype these days. Um, and I think that it's absolutely phenomenal. Only three Decidueye, but I perhaps think that that might just be enough as well on top of the Hoopa and the two Basculin. Uh, so super cool. Four scoop up nuts, four candies. Yeah, man, I love it a lot. I think this list is super cool. Um, you know, definitely want to go check this one out. Uh, save this one for later. Take a screenshot, guys, because that is one of the coolest lists that I've seen in a long, long time. Okay. All right, next up, we got at number 10. We have Yuri uh, uh, Fukuda, which is our highest placing Japanese participant in the tournament. He was playing Blacephalon. Uh, Chris Cephalon, maybe. Tempo Zard, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, and yeah, it looks like he was. So he's got the four Jirachis, two Cram, two Balans. He's only got one Reshi, but he does have one Reshi and one Heatran. So you have sort of the option, right? Which I think is actually pretty cool. Um, other than that, pretty standard uh, Chris Ephelon stuff. 15 energies, um, four Hearths, four Fire Crystals. So like really hammering it home on the energy consistency here. Um, one Eldegoss. Yeah, he's got the only five supporters in here. Four Nets, four Switch, Cherish Balls, Ordinary Rod, and a Reset Stamp. All good stuff. This list seems actually, actually uh, incredibly busted. Um, Tempo Zard, if spoiler alert, was the deck to win the tournament as well. Um, so, you know, that's something to keep in mind. One of the one of the biggest, highest profile events in a long time. Um, you know, two, whole full two-day system, top 32 cut. Uh, Blacephalon, uh, Tempo Zard was the one to take it home. So, big shout-out to Yuri there. I like your list a lot, man. Congrats on getting top eight um, in this tournament. Next up, we have Andrew Parsons here uh, playing E-Turn, our second highest placing E-Turn in the tournament. Let's take a look. We've seen a, a handful of them so far. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's just Disruption E-Turn with a Weakness Guard energy, though, which I think is super, super cool. I think Plants Hammer is very important. Uh, but Weakness Guard, man, that's actually kind of cool. I wonder if he, like, hit, like, any of those Excadrills were Colossals throughout the tournament. Maybe Weakness Guard was Clutch. If any of my friends are watching this, like Logan or Vaughn or Zach or anybody, uh, they know that I absolutely got tilted one time. Uh, I got so tilted one time playing Ditto Box, and I hit E-Turn, and he just found his one of Weakness Guard energy. Um, in his deck, like, on his second turn, and I just, oh my god, man, it made me so, so, so angry. I think that E-Turns are going to be playing a lot of weakness card energies, especially after Battle Styles comes out, uh, with the Urshifu's in here, so I think that if, in the future, like, when Urshifu comes out, it might be worth just running and playing Crushing Hammers, to be 100% honest with you. Uh, but yeah, definitely super cool. Um, I like weakness card, man. Again, uh, I love it, but I hate playing against it sometimes, right? Oh my gosh, Okay. Uh, now we're on to our top eight. So our top eight consisted of Luke Metal, Luke Metal, Senti, 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 E-Turn, Luke Metal, and Blount. So we had four Welder decks and three Luke Metals in an E-Turn in our top eight. We're going to take a look at Pole Goal here from, what is this flag here? Poland. He's from Poland. That makes sense. Uh, let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at his Luke Metal list. Uh, pretty standard Luke Metal here. Well, he does have the plants, so the newer plants, Tag Call Engine, all good stuff here. He does have the capes on top of Metal Goggles to help with that ADP matchup. I like it. I like it a whole lot. Um, we got two capture energies as well, which is actually pretty interesting. And we do have the Aegislash tech for the Decidueye matchup. So this deck has it all kind of. Um, maybe a, a little bit more variance in the deck. Maybe a tad bit you know, less consistent than some of the other Luke Metalists that we saw. But with the top escape, the capture energies, the Aegislash, and, and the you know the power plant disruption value, I think that this list had everything it needed to go very far in the tournament. So big shout out to you, Pull Goal. Uh, congratulations. Very cool to see you make top eight with that list. And then after that, we have Anon Gunta from uh, Thailand. From Thailand, bro, and he was also playing Luke Metal and was at the number seven seed. Let's take a look. Um, okay, so extremely similar list here. Uh, we do have the Aegislash tech in here. We've got all the tag call, all the good stuff. We have a scrapper in here. Instead of running uh, the capes, he's running one stealthy hood, still power plants, no capture energy. Um, and uh, they te technically they had like the same placement. One was ranked higher than the other, but realistically, they both got knocked out of the tournament at the same time time at the same phase so definitely cool it's definitely very cool to see um and uh stealthy hood man it's staying alive it's staying relevant i think that uh toughness game might be a little bit more better at this point uh but interesting to note the two highest placing luke medals so far we do see agus lash in their list i don't again i don't know if if that means anything i don't know if that's important um but extremely extremely interesting to say the least so we do have one more Luke Metal to look at, take a look at, but first, let's take a look at uh, these three centies here. Next up, we have at number six, our man, my man, Marco Cifuentes from Chile. Chile, I don't know how to say that. I don't know if there's a correct way to say that. Um, okay. He was playing Senti, um, and this is, of course, just Senti, Nat's ability Senti. We do see the cram in here. 
Um, we got the three Drachis, Volcanion. We got this, the this reset stamp. No Giratina. Interesting to note yet again. Uh, but other than that, everything looks pretty standard. We do not see Heatran, but we do see a Reshi. Um, we see, you know, Tutu. Yeah, all this good stuff. I think Cram in here is pretty interesting, and I think that it makes a lot of sense. No Giratina, though, which, again, I'm, I'm not sure if that really came down to being too, too important. We did see a lot of Luke medals, again, in our top 8 and our top 32, so maybe it, maybe maybe they would have wanted to play Giratina, but you know what? Who knows? I think that Senti typically wins that matchup overall, though we did see, if you're watching the live stream, uh, we did see a lot of Luke medals come out on top and some interesting matchups. So, yeah, huge shout-out to you, Marco. Uh, great placement, as always, bro. Um, very awesome to see you get 6th in the tournament with this... Uh, with the Santa's Gorge list. Next up, we have Chalo Zamorano, fifth here from Chile, also playing Senti. Let's see how his Senti look, uh, list looks. Um, it's the exact same list. Uh, actually, it's not. He's not running. Uh, he's not running Karamarant, um, and he's running Giratina. Other than that, I think it's exactly the same. So that's interesting. Maybe they were. Maybe they're friends. Maybe they know each other. Maybe they tested together, and they were like, you know what? I'm going to run Cram instead of Giratina. And this guy was like, I'm going to run Giratina. See how it goes. And they both almost did exactly the same in terms of how well they placed in the tournament, which is very interesting. Um, so yeah, Marco or, uh, or Chalo, if either of you guys are watching this right now, you know, let me know, like after the tournament, after playing, uh, do you suggest running Cram or Giratina? Is your decision still split after playing? Uh, let me know. Definitely super, super interesting to see. Next up, we have Luigi Lira from Brazil, fourth in the tournament. So this was one of our guys that did make top four. Shout out to you, Luigi. Um, and, uh, let's check a look at your Santa Scorch list, see what we're looking at. Um, Okay, so this guy has got the best of both worlds here. He's got the Cram and he's got the Giratina. Maybe that made the difference. Um, I don't know what he cut from his deck uh, to run both of those in here. Maybe he's running... Uh, what is he missing here? I don't know exactly what he's missing. And to be honest with you, I just I can't I can't pick out with a one card. But yeah, he's got the cram and the Giratina in there. I mean, this right here seems like the epitome. This was our highest placing Santa Scorch in the tournament. Um, and, and to be 100% honest with you, this might be the way to go. Uh, you can't see the fire energy thing there. It says 11, by the way. Um, but yeah, this was our highest placing Senti. It's a very beautiful list. Taking a look at it, it's got so many awesome things in here that realistically, you know, pop right out to you. And, and really, each individual card has a purpose. Um, and I'm really, really happy to take a look at this list. I think this list right now, taking a look at it, is absolutely phenomenal. Um, and uh, personally, I, I just, you know, I think that this list is busted. Oh, I think he's running one less Jirachi, by the way, now that I pointed that out. So very cool. Very cool. I just love looking. I could look at this list all day, man. I could look at this list all day. I think that's absolutely incredible. All right. Now we're moving on to uh, Fabrizio here, third in the tournament. So him and Luigi got knocked out in top four. Uh, Fabrizio is from Peru. This was our highest placing E-turn in the tournament. Uh, let's take a look at what his list is looking like. We have the four hammers, two power plants on top of all that. We do have Dangerous Drill. Now, he's running one Yabeltal, two Goon, and three Spear Doom. So going all in on the Spear Doom goodness. Everything else pretty standard, only nine energies, no E-spinners or anything crazy like that. Three boss, uh, four, four Marnie research. So it's 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 pretty run-of-the-mill. I mean, not in a bad way. It's, it's good. Like, it, it's... Typically, like what you would probably expect uh, to see in E turn right now in a high placing E turn list, I think that the one dangerous drill on top of the four hammers and power plant was actually very interesting. I think that that's a pretty interesting tech, um, and I think that that might have made the difference for Fabrizio. So, you know, big shout out to you, guy. Uh, congrats, bro. I mean, third in the tournament at 320 is very, very impressive. Our number one uh, E turn out of the entire tournament, and we had 61 E turns. So, that's definitely an achievement, my dude. Congrats to you. Next up, we have Vinny Fernandez, dude. Vinny, we watched Vinny through the top 32 live stream. Uh, this then, I think, is only like 13, 14 years old, playing Luke Metal in this tournament. This guy had an incredible run. It was literally like, like I was just blessed. Me and Mitch were blessed to be able to watch this guy play. Um, and uh, the Filthy Goat had great words to say to him. I mean, everybody, big shout out to Vinny for making finals, man. He played absolutely stellar. Won a bunch of crazy, terrible matchups for him. Um, and overall, just played tremendously throughout the entire top 32 bracket. Uh, his uh, his uh, Luke Metal list is very interesting. We do see Aegis Slash in here. We see the goggles. We see the capes. We see the power plants. Everything else pretty standard. Two captures. This is the exact same Luke Metal list as I think that one of those prior Luke Metals that we saw. So maybe they were testing together. Um, I'm not 100% sure. But uh, I think if you're playing Luke Metal right now, which is a really good choice, I think Luke Metal is a very good deck in the format right now. Uh, surprisingly, which I was wrong. I'll say it right now. I was wrong. I thought Luke Metal would go way down after Shining Fates meta got uh, defined. But no, it's actually much better. Uh, realistically, because so many people are playing E-Turn, and, and ADP's a little bit lackluster right now. But for my money, I mean, this seems to be the best 
the best way to play Luke Metal. I hate to say it, Jay Gearhart. I'm sorry if you're watching this. Vinny, if you're watching this, man, congrats. Your Luke Metal list is actually cracked. It's it's, it's absolutely insane. Um, I don't have any much anything else to say to you, Vinny. Congrats, my man, for the amazing, amazing run. Uh, your prizing will come out later tonight. Uh, just congratulations. I mean, it was it was awesome to watch you play. Thank you so much for participating. I um, mean, just congrats on an absolutely amazing run. Next up, we have Yarifu93 from Italy, man. The the underdog. No one saw it coming. Uh, playing Tempo Zard, uh, playing Crisephalon, playing Blounds, whatever you want to call it, did win the Tropical Beach. He won the tournament. Uh, we we sipped it over to him. We, we traded that beach to him uh, immediately after the game was over. Um, and he walked away uh, a very happy man, I, I can presume. Uh, but this is just pretty typical uh, pretty typical Tempo Zard here. We got the 2-2-2 two, two, two lineup between Cramp, Blounds, and Reshi. Uh, we got the four Jirachis, Dedenes, Crobats, Zigzagoon, Marshadow, Mewtwo, or Corio Fio. No Giratina, but he did beat Luke Metal in finals anyway. I think it was a 2-0 sweep, I believe. Uh, pretty tough matchup for Vinny overall, and, and Vinny played it very well. We got the four Welder, one Boss, yeah. I mean, this is all typical stuff that you would think, right? I mean, there's nothing that jumps out at you here. It's just... Good old straight Chris Cephalon Tempo Zard. I say it differently every time, but you know what? Uh, this list is absolutely insane. And for my money, I've said it for a little while, I think that this is the best Welder deck uh, in the format. If you're playing Fire, this is the deck you should be playing. Not saying Senti's bad. Senti had an amazing tournament overall. But whenever we have these big tournaments, whether it's these GG Tour regionals, uh, whether it's uh, you know these these big best of three tournaments, these huge 320-player two-day events, both Cephalon Tempo Zard always comes out on top. It's just absolutely consistent. Uh, always seems to do extremely well in these sort of high-pressure situations. Uh, Yari played it per, uh, per, like just absolutely perfectly, um, and I got nothing really else to say, man. Just congrats to Yari. Congrats on that Tropical Beach, man. I hope you enjoy it, um, and I hope that you get to pimp out your PTCGO account with that for sure. Not, a, not everybody has a Tropical Beach, so definitely super, super cool. So, yeah. That's going to be it, guys. Uh, we went through it a little bit quick, so I apologize if I didn't, you know, spend too much time on your list. We did cut to top 32. I wanted to give everybody their shine, um, and I wanted to at least highlight all of the decks that did make it into our day two in our top cut live stream. So congratulations to everybody who was on this list. I hope you guys enjoyed all these deck lists. I hope you guys enjoyed playing, to be honest with you. I hope you guys enjoyed the live stream. Watching this video right now, I just hope you guys, you know, had a good time, and, and I hope that you guys, you know, enjoy yourselves. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, chill series number 22 it was insane uh i don't know if we'll ever have an event like this ever again to be honest i hope we do uh, but uh, this big two-day event like this the tropical beach all of the great players 320 people uh, amazing live stream it, it was just the perfect uh, couple days here i mean i was just absolutely uh ecstatic to be able to run this event and, and give you guys something like this again huge shout out to the filthy goat um I, I can't say it enough. I mean, everything that we did the last two days was because of him. It was possible because of him. I hope that we did your Tropical Beach justice, your generosity justice. Um, and uh, it just really, really means a lot to me. So thank you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Again, big shout out to our channel members. All of you guys, you're the reason why we're able to make content every day and keep things rolling. You guys are the best. Uh, big shout out to Card Cavern for also sponsoring this tournament. You can use the code CHILLTCG. Uh, for 5% off your entire order at cardcarvingtradingcards.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click the video, uh, share it to your friends, retweet me on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, play in Chill Series number 23 next Wednesday. And uh, yeah, I got too much else to say. I don't, I don't, we're just, I'm just rambling at this point. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we'll see you guys in probably, we'll, we'll probably just see you guys tomorrow. I don't know. I'll probably put, find something to upload. But see you guys later. I've been Maddie from Chill TCG. Have a good night.